Solomon has come a long way with their new Aero family of shoes. What I've got today is the Aero Glide. This is the max cushion end of the Aero family. And I can already tell that this is going to be the Solomon shoe that I put more miles in than any other Solomon shoe before. Let's get into it. New for early 2023 is Solomon's new Aero family of shoes. This is the Aero Glide. This is a max cushion shoe. We also have the Aero Blaze and the Aero Vault. And in the time that I have been wearing the Aero Glide, I can already tell that this is going to be a fantastic shoe that I reach for time and time again. And if you haven't already run in a Solomon shoe, but you have been thinking about it and you're looking for some kind of road trainer, something that you can use for pretty much everything, a daily trainer, the Aeroglide is something that you're going to want to take a look at. Now Solomon is more known for their trail shoes, right? They have dominated the trail shoe running market for a very long time. And I think, I think this new Aero group of shoes, I think this brings Solomon squarely into the road running space with, at least for the Aeroglide, a pretty solid contender. Now the Aeroglide will cost you $160, which is more on the high end of a daily trainer, but it's not so far on the high end that it's out of the normal range. Isn't it horrible that now we are looking at $160 shoes as being within the normal range? Either way, I think $160 represents pretty good value. Would I like to see it cheaper? Yes, of course. But from a competition perspective, I think $160 for the the Aeroglide is actually a pretty good price. Aside from price, we all want to know the weight of a shoe, and Solomon is claiming that a US men's size 9 tips the scale at around 9 ounces or 254 grams. However, in my size, a US men's 12 and a half, it tips the scale at 11.1 ounces or 314 grams. So for my size, my big boats of feet, I think 314 grams is actually pretty good. When I put these shoes on, they don't feel heavy whatsoever. But let's go over some of the specs, some of the materials, and then I'll tell you about the ride. And as usual, we're going to start at the top, we're going to work our way down. Look at this heel collar, squarely daily trainer, right? We've got lots of padding around the heel collar. The tongue is nice and padded. It's not overly padded like we see with some daily trainers, but you know, I'd say it's more on the heavier end of the padding spectrum than the thinner end of the padding spectrum. It is not gusseted, but we do have a lace loop right here in the middle that holds it in place. The heel counter, let me see if I can squeeze that. It's fairly rigid. I guess we want that in a daily train. It's gonna stop that heel from sliding around and lock your foot in. And needless to say, I did not experience any heel slip because generally I don't really get a lot of heel slip in any shoes. Just like most other shoes, the Aero Glide locked me in nicely. The upper on the Aero Glide is probably my favorite thing about this whole shoe. They are using a 3D open mesh and I just love how it looks. I love how it feels. It is super breathable, even though if I hold it right up to the camera, it doesn't really look that transparent it's very opaque and yet it is super breathable and super comfortable wrapped around my foot now something i do love about solomon shoes in general is their sense fit and that's kind of like these bands that wrap around the midfoot which contribute to getting that midfoot lockdown it just gives the shoes a nice custom feel you know when you cinch those laces down you're getting ready to go we have some overlays on the upper as we would expect right along the eyelet chain and then there are some internal underlays right around the toe box just to keep that upper away from your feet which helps contribute to breathability, lets your feet breathe when you're out there on the run. And then of course we've got the SensiFit bands coming around the medial and lateral sides. And then it's down to the midsole. And the midsole, first of all, I love how this looks. I like how big this looks. It is a huge chunk. We have 37 in the heel, 27 in the forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop. So it's well positioned as a daily trainer. A 10 millimeter drop, as you know, is going to take pressure off your Achilles area. And it's just a nice big drop for churning out the miles, the type of miles that you do on a daily basis. Now, Solomon says that this is the type of shoe that you are going to use for 90% of your runs. And I would certainly agree with him. This is a daily trainer and has enough cushioning for when you're running long, when you're on your feet for hours and hours. But I also have done several workouts in this shoe and the shoe feels surprisingly good when I pick up the pace. It doesn't feel clunky at all. Even though it's a 314 gram shoe on my feet, it feels pretty light. And when I was doing intervals, the shoe did disappear on my feet. I can't really say that about every daily train I test. Now Solomon is using their energy foam in the midsole here and you would think that this shoe looks super plush, but actually I think Solomon has hit the sweet spot as far as the softness, the firmness range, because it can be a little tiring to run in a shoe that is just too soft. And it can be very demanding to run in a shoe that's just too firm. And I think, and as I said, I think Solomon really hit the sweet spot. It is a firmer ride than I would think by looking at it, but it's not too firm that I wouldn't choose this for any long run. Did that come out right? 
Okay, so my first run in this shoe, I went out and I ran 15 miles. I didn't have any issues and my feet felt great at the end. This would be a shoe that I would consider grabbing. Let's say if I was going to run a marathon, but not at race pace, or if I was going to do a road ultra marathon where I was going to be running fairly slow and all I wanted was comfort, I would feel comfortable grabbing the Aeroglide. Quite obviously, this is not a race day shoe just because it's a little heavy, it's a little big. We want something a little lighter. But for those slower paces, for those bread and butter miles that you and I do for 90% of the time, well, that's me. You probably doing it for 80% of the time. Remember the whole 80, 20 thing. For me, I shrink my fast miles and I do more slow miles. So I am probably gonna be grappling for the Aeroglide a lot more than you may. But either way, most of us are running slow miles for the majority of our miles. And whether you are going out for a recovery run, for an easy run, let's say you're doing a long run with some marathon pace miles, the Aeroglide is gonna fit the bill. Let's come down to the outsole. We're using Rode Contra Grip on the bottom. You see, we got a lot of good coverage of the outsole right here and I found the grip to be surprisingly good. I have run while the rows were wet. I didn't experience any slippage. Of course, in the dry, it's going to stick like a race car to the road. And I've taken these shoes out on some very light kind of shell trails and they worked well for that too. Something I want to draw your attention to and I actually don't know what it's for, but you see this right here at the bottom, we've got like a little loop. I don't know if you can see me through it, but there's a hollow area underneath this piece of outsole rubber here and here. And I can't for the life of me figure out what this is actually supposed to do. I would think that it would be less expensive for Solomon to do away with this little bridge of outsole rubber here and here. And also it would lower the weight, probably imperceptibly, but it would still lower the weight. Oh, I'm also seeing there's another little bridge of outsole rubber right here on the front. So if you have any idea what these little pieces of rubber are for, why don't you let me know in the comments. Now this is a non-plated shoe and because of that it is fairly flexible, not super flexible, but you can see I'm, I can move that up fairly easy. I'm not actually giving it too much pressure, but it does feel good underfoot. Now, just back to this energy foam for a second. This is an EVA OBC blend. So take that for what it's worth. A lot of people are saying that EVA has seen its day and we need to do away with it, but Solomon is combining EVA with OBC and I think they've come up with something pretty good. Now Solomon is incorporating their R camber geometry. And basically that is just what they're calling their toe spring geometry. And it's supposed to just keep you moving super quick for smooth transitions. You know how that goes? And although I always think that the talking about the geometry is all like marketing hype. I can't say that I disagree with it. This shoe does have surprisingly good easy transitions, which is probably why it feels so good when I pick up the pace. Okay, so I wanted to talk about ride, but I realized that I've been talking about the ride of the Aeroglide throughout this entire video. So just to summarize, this shoe is going to feel good when you're out on the long run. And for a daily trainer with this much stack height, it is surprisingly agile when you want to pick up the pace. I'm trying to think what I could compare this to, and it's actually quite difficult. Like, it's a daily trainer in the line of the Brooks Ghost, but the Brooks Ghost is just a little heavier, a little more clunky, and doesn't feel as speedy. I suppose it's more in line with the Nike Pegasus in the way that it's a good all-rounder. It's good for logging those long miles. It's good for picking up the pace. But most recently, I've been running in the Brooks Hyperion Max. And although this is considerably heavier than the Brooks Hyperion Max, I feel that this this light upper feels good around my foot the same way that the Hyperion Max does. And the firmness of the midsole is fairly similar. Now the Hyperion Max has been one of my favorite shoes so far of 2023. And I think the main difference, the main difference between me choosing the Aeroglide or the Hyperion Max is that if I'm going out for a workout, I would probably choose the Hyperion Max. Even though I said that this feels good when you pick up the pace, the Hyperion Max is just a little lighter and feels a little more agile. But I've said it before, I've said it before about other shoes, but if you only wanted to have one pair of shoes, if you already love Solomon trail shoes, it is definitely worth taking a look at the Aeroglide for your road miles. This shoe is gonna feel good. It's gonna do everything you want it to do, probably aside from racing. And by the look of this outsole rubber, I mean, I can see a little wear, but I've been using this shoe quite a bit. I think it's going to last you quite a while. All right guys, well, thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. If you have made it to this point in the video, why don't you drop the baguette emoji in the comments so I know that you've made it all the way to the end of the video. And I don't know, is that really appropriate? Like Solomon is a French company. People eat baguettes all over the world, so I don't read too far into it. Anyway, my name is Matt. This has been my review of the Solomon Aeroglide. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.